hold on to your seats, because today we're diving headfirst into a roller coaster of unbelievable stories. I'm thrilled to welcome you to a gripping journey filled with heart stopping moments and jaw dropping escapes. From the brink of disaster to the edge of survival. These are the tales of those who looked danger in the eye and lived to share their remarkable experiences. Get ready to be amazed by tales that defy logic and challenge our understanding of fate itself. In the tumultuous year of 1975, the United States was rocked by not one, but two shocking attempts on the life of President Gerald Ford. On September 5th, in Sacramento, California. A woman named Lynette Squeaky from attempted to assassinate President Ford from a follower of cult leader Charles Manson and struggling with drug addiction, aimed a firearm at the president. Quick and courageous action by the Secret Service led to her capture. Despite the shot being fired, it missed its target, sparing President Ford's life. 17 days later, on September 22nd, another attempt unfolded, this time in San Francisco, California. Sarah Jane Moore, a former Marine with a troubled past, aimed her own firearm at President Ford as he left a hotel. Authorities swiftly intervened, preventing a tragedy once again. Interestingly, both Fromm and Murr were incarcerated in the same West Virginia prisons. Their lives, connected by these chilling events. However, their stories took an unexpected turn. In 1979, Fromm managed to escape briefly, followed by Murr in 1989. But their freedom was short-lived, as they were recaptured. The cycle of incarceration continued, and both women found themselves back behind bars. Remarkably, decades later, both Fromm and Moore were released on parole. A chapter in American history marked by shocking attempts, complex motivations, and the resilience of a nation. Two women, two attempts, one president. A stark reminder of the fragile balance between chaos and order. But that's not all. Many words come to mind when describing a honeymoon, but survival is not one of them. Unfortunately, for Swedes Stefan and Erikus Vanstrom, disaster seemed to accompany them on their honeymoon in 2011. The pair set off with their baby daughter, Eleanor, on a planned four-month adventure holiday to various countries, including Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and China. Little did they know, their honeymoon would be an unforgettable journey filled with dramatic twists and turns that no honeymooner could anticipate. Surviving a blown off bus roof during a monsoon in Indonesia seemed like the low point of their holiday, but it was just the beginning of a series of life-threatening incidents. In Australia, they faced the fiery chaos of a bushfire in Perth. Confronting nature's fury head-on and showcasing their resilience in the face of danger. As if that wasn't enough, a cyclone in Cairns swept through. Challenging their survival yet again and pushing them to their limits. Their path led them to New Zealand, a place of irony and mercy. Rerouted from Christchurch to avoid an impending earthquake, they narrowly missed a catastrophe. But fate's flip side emerged when they arrived in Tokyo. The deadly earthquake and tsunami of March 11, 2011, struck Tooku just as they thought they were safe. As they recounted their harrowing experiences, a stunning truth came to light. Stefan had also survived the devastating 2004 tsunami in Southeast Asia. Their journey wasn't just a honeymoon. It was an odyssey of survival. Each destination brought new challenges that tested their resolve, adaptability, and love for one another. Let's turn the spotlight to a different chapter in our collection of survival stories. Little Gabriella Cohn from Houston, Texas, entered this world just days before it would be forever changed by the forces of nature. Hurricane Harvey swept through the state, leaving destruction in its wake. Surprisingly, 
Gabriella's house remained largely untouched amid the chaos. However, Gabriella's parents had concerns beyond their damaged surroundings. Water supplies, fires, and a host of problems loomed in the aftermath. Seeking a respite from the uncertainty, they made a difficult decision. The Cohn family, Gabriella in tow, sought refuge in their second home in Miami, Florida. Here, they hoped to find a sense of security in the midst of turmoil. But nature had more challenges in store. Just three days after arriving in Miami, Hurricane Irma bore down upon the region, prompting yet another evacuation. With an 11-hour drive ahead, the Cones embarked on a journey to safety. After hours on the road, they reached a small town Alabama hotel, where they sought shelter from Irma's fury. As the hurricane raged outside, Gabriella's family found solace in each other's company, weathering the storm together. Less than a week later, and more than 3,000 miles covered, the Cone family finally arrived back in Texas, a place where their journey had begun. Through adversity and uncertainty, little Gabriella became a symbol of resilience. Her parents, facing two powerful hurricanes in her early days, nicknamed her Storm, a testament to the strength they found within themselves. In the face of nature's mightiest forces, the bonds of family and the human spirit can weather any storm. Now, Sir Adrian Cartney Wired, born from Belgian and Irish parents, won himself the reputation of the unkillable soldier. He fought in and survived three wars, the Second Bar War, World War I, and World War II, and lost an eye and a hand. Although he was too young to join the army, not being a British subject and not having his father's consent, the Y.R. quit his studies, took a fake name, pretended to be older, and left for South Africa to fight in the Second Bar War, where he was shot in the chest and sent home. After his recuperation, he returned to war, of course. The Y.R. was severely injured on eight occasions in World War I and despite losing his left eye in the then Somaliland in 1914, he returned to fight. And in 1915, on the Western Front, he suffered gunshot wounds to his skull, ankle, hip, leg, and deer. During World War II, he was assigned commanding officer roles and, luckily, didn't lose any further limbs. However, he had to survive in a prisoner of war camp at age 61. In 1943, he was appointed British representative to China until his retirement in 1946. Despite all his suffering, Carpenter Wyard wrote in his autobiography, Frankly, I had enjoyed the war. Oh, and he might have been the illegitimate son of King Leopold II. And speaking of extraordinary feats, Let's explore our next astonishing narrative. Guinness World Records recognizes Roy Sullivan, a park ranger whose life was electrified in ways unimaginable. Nicknamed the Spark Ranger, Roy Sullivan patrolled the Shenandoah National Park, a place where lightning danced with the skies. In a remarkable twist of fate, Sullivan was struck by lightning not once, not twice, but an astonishing seven times. His extraordinary journey began in 1942 when lightning first made contact, struck again in 1969, then 1970, 1972, 1973, 1976, and once more in 1977. He bore the scars of his battles, burns, singed hair, and even a lost toenail. He bore the scars of his battles, burns, singed hair, and even a lost toenail. Remarkably, even his wife Pat fell victim to Lightning's capricious embrace. Discover Magazine recognized Roy Sullivan's indomitable spirit in 2008. A Soviet World War II pilot defying gravity. And a sailor 76-day odyssey at sea shared the stage. But the story took an unexpected turn. On September 28, 1983, 
Roy Sullivan's journey came to an end. The odds of one man facing lightning's fury seven times? Very few disasters are as terrifying as tsunamis, as we have learned since the Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami that hit 14 countries on Boxing Day 2004, killing nearly 228,000 people. When in its path, surviving a tsunami is exceptional. Surviving too is a miracle. Zarul Fawadi was one fortunate man who survived earthquakes and tsunamis on December 26, 2004, and March 11, 2011. He ran away from the tsunami in Aceh, Indonesia, in 2004, thinking that it was the end of the world. Thankful to have survived, he moved to Japan as a doctoral student where he was on campus when again disaster struck on March 11, 2011, when an earthquake and tsunami struck in Tooku. From this disaster, 16,000 people were killed, and a nuclear crisis was looming. But Fadi got away with only being left without power and water at home. Fadi wasn't the only one to have survived two tsunamis. Fellow Indonesian Ramat Saiful Berry, also survived the 2004 tsunami and the one hitting the Sulawesi Island on September 28, 2018, after a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. But that's not all, get ready for an even more astonishing tale. The only female survivor of multiple disasters on this list is Viola Jessup, a stewardess on the RMS Olympic. Violet was the eldest of Irish immigrants living in Argentina. When her father died, they moved to England, and her mother became a stewardess on a royal mail line, while Violet attended a convent school. When her mother's health deteriorated, Violet also found work as a stewardess on the White Star Line before joining the HMS Olympic. In 1911, the Olympic collided with the HMS Hawk. The first of three shipwrecks Violet would survive in her more than 200 voyages. She didn't really want to make the popular move to the HMS Titanic but was eventually persuaded by friends. It was on this, the Titanic's maiden voyage, that Violet survived her second shipwreck by being taken to safety on one of the lifeboats. Afterward, she was transferred back to the Olympic. In 1916, during World War I and now being trained as a nurse, she joined the war effort by working on the HMS Britannic, which hit a deep sea mine and sunk in the Aegean Sea in 1916. She had to jump out of her lifeboat this time to escape the ship's propellers, which caused a fractured skull. This unsinkable, as she was nicknamed, went on to join the White Star Line again. She died at the age of 83. Let's delve into our next incredible story. There are stories of miraculous survival that defy belief. August 1945 marked the unimaginable. Two atomic bombs unleashed upon Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Amidst the horror. As many as 150 individuals defied the odds by surviving both. One among them was Tsutomu Yamaguchi, an ordinary man thrust into an extraordinary ordeal. An employee at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Yamaguchi found himself in Hiroshima on that fateful August 7th. Witnessing the blinding light and feeling the searing heat, he emerged badly burned. Amidst a river of corpses, he fought to find his way back to life. Resolute. He boarded a train bound for Nagasaki, unaware of the destiny that awaited. In his hometown, he reunited with his wife and son, embracing them with newfound hope. But fate is unpredictable, and destiny had its own design. On August 9th, as he recounted his harrowing tale, the unimaginable struck again. As he stood in disbelief, Nagasaki bore the brunt of another atomic blast. Satomu Yamaguchi's life, a testament to the unfathomable twists of destiny. He defied death twice. But life's trials continued. Satomu Yamaguchi lived on, 
battling the scars of radiation exposure. He finally departed at the age of 93. A survivor whose life was forever entwined with tragedy. His legacy echoes through history, a testament to human resilience in the face of incomprehensible. Memory of those who endured the unimaginable. May their stories remind us of the strength within us all. And that's a wrap on our journey through Single Court 8 and believable stories of close calls. What an incredible ride it's been. I hope these stories left you as amazed as they left me. If you found yourself on the edge of your seat, just like I did, don't forget to hit that like button. If you want to keep experiencing these incredible narratives, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. And hey, if you've got your own close call story or want to share your thoughts on these tales, drop a comment down below. I love hearing from you. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment. Let's keep the conversation going. Again thanks for watching.